How to make a ring that fits. Words that can strike terror into the hearts of metal clay artisans everywhere. I'm Julie Holt of the PMC Studio. And in this video, I'm going to share my top tips with you for making silver clay rings that fit. Now there's no doubt that they can be a bit of a dark art and they're really hard to get right. And that's even when using traditional materials and techniques. When you make a ring using sterling silver sheet or wire, you need to size the ring accurately. You need to calculate how much metal you'll need. And then you need to take care that you work to these measurements when forming the ring. In a nutshell, you need to work consistently and accurately. Now silver clay is all of these things too, plus you have shrinkage to deal with. Unfortunately, shrinkage isn't an exact science and lots of things can affect it, those pesky variables. So all we get from the silver clay manufacturers is shrinkage ranges. And it's no wonder that silver clay rings are hard to get right. What you're aiming for is to understand it all well enough to get pretty close to the size that you want, as generally that is good enough to create a ring that fits. And to do that, you need to focus on three key stages. So it's what you're doing when you size the ring, it's what you're doing when you make the ring, and it's about when you fire the ring. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share some tips with you on each of these stages to help you to understand this more. So firstly, let's talk about when we size the ring. Now, one of the rules when you're taking the measurement of your finger is that the ring should slide on easy and come off hard. So what this means is that when you're actually sliding on the sizer, you want it to go onto the finger quite straightforward without any resistance, but you want a little bit of resistance when you're pulling it off again. And the reason for this is quite simple. We don't want our rings to fall off when we're wearing them. The other thing that you need to think about when you're sizing the ring is the temperature and also the time of the day, as both of these can affect the size of your fingers. So what we always suggest to people is to take measurements throughout the day, and then this way you can get a good gauge of what the size should really be. And the third thing I would say is that band width matters. So basically any rings with wide bands are usually tighter and that's due to the metal dragging on the skin when you take it off. So let's talk about when we make the silver clay ring. Now, one of the things that you need to work out is a make size. Okay, so this is the size that you want the ring to be plus a little bit extra to allow for shrinkage. And the extra bit is known as the shrinkage allowance. Now, when you're working out your make size, one of the things that's really important to be aware of and understand is regional ring sizing systems. And the reason for this is that most often, shrinkage allowance is expressed in US ring sizes. And this is all purely because in the early days of silver clay, all the shrinkage tests that were done were done in the US because that's where silver clay was the most popular. So if you are using a different ring sizing system from this, then you need to make sure that the shrinkage allowance calculation you're using relates to the ring sizing system you're working with. And if it doesn't, you're gonna to need to convert it. The other thing to be careful of when you're making the ring is that you don't reduce or stretch the wet clay during forming. So it's really important that once you've actually worked out the make size, you need to make the ring that size. If you make it any bigger or smaller, then that's gonna cause you sizing issues further down the line. And then the last thing that I would say is to avoid removing too much clay from the inside of the ring band during dry refining. So we like to sand it and make it all beautifully, perfectly smooth. However, if you get carried away, then you could end up taking away more clay than you should, and you end up with a bigger ring. So let's talk about when we fire the ring. Now, during firing, what happens is the binder burns off and the silver clay particles fuse together where they touch. 
and they leave small gaps between the metal particles. When we talk about the size of these gaps, we refer to density. So fired clay that's considered high density has smaller gaps between the silver particles. Now dense is good. It means our piece is stronger, but it also means that the silver clay has shrunk more during firing. And what affects density is the firing schedule. And this is where the 10 to 15% difference comes from. So it's really important to understand the impact of the firing schedule you plan to use on density, as this will help you estimate shrinkage. Now, just to complicate matters even further, it's also important to understand that metal clay doesn't shrink evenly either. However, like I said at the beginning, this is not an exact science and that's okay. Remember, we're trying to get pretty close to the required size as that is generally good enough to create a ring that fits. Now, the last thing to think about is your kiln environment. That's also absolutely key. Even if you've got the firing schedule all figured out and you've made your ring perfectly, you've sized it perfectly and you've done everything right, all your hard work can go out the window if your kiln isn't firing accurately or evenly. So given all of this, I know what you're thinking. Why bother? And that's a very good point. For me, I love rings and I love the creative possibilities of silver clay. So I want to overcome the challenges and combine the two. And this is why during the PMC certification fast track, we go into all of this and more. We go in in detail, we teach you how to make silver clay rings that fit. In total, you make three rings using different techniques and firing schedules. So you get to experiment and practice with expert support. This is a distant learning program. It's delivered via our virtual classroom approach. So you get all the benefits of a studio class in the comfort of your own home and at a time to suit you. Now, enrollment is now open. So why not use the links in the comments below to find out more?